be targeting armed robbers have been given a sort of leeway to use extra force more likely to lead to abuse than even the normal um, um, amount of abuse that you see with the rest of the forces so in as much as nigerians have come to sort of expect abuse and you know sorts of uh, malfeasance from the police and other paramilitary forces uh we've gotten much more of that from the sash in it in recent times so what is like what has what has been the straw that has finally broken the camel's back why have nigerians all of a sudden decided look we've had enough sasa has been around for quite some time now mm. but why is there now a seeming trend why is everybody speaking up now people across the world what occasion the end sas movement well um this movement has been in phases uh the first serious uh, uh, attempt at ending sas in fact the first time it trended was in 2017 and uh very not uh, notably uh these movements have always coincided with you know great periods of like economic angst or privation so yes we have covid so lots of people have lost their income they are unemployed or you know uh, in some other ways discomforted by the system then you have additional burdens you know placed on them by groups like this so um like in 2017 when we had like we're just exiting an economic recession a lot of nigerians were fed up with the the acts of sars and there was a protest yeah. that continued a little bit in 2018 but not as uh, uh prominent as 2017's was but the government keeps saying you know they will prescribe them or look into it or do something to revise it but let's not steal your thunder i believe we need to yeah hear we'll go into that so Karim, let me bring you this okay, on this light Karim, you have been to nigeria several times i mean one if you visit nigeria by road you are likely to see a lot of instances where policemen will attempt to stop you try to search you try to take bribes from you it appears the state of policing in nigeria is one that is not amongst the best that is credible and with your own experiences of visiting nigeria what do you think really is the problem that causes nigeria's police force to be so um not credible and indisciplined for want of a better word well i'm, I'm not i'm not quite sure if i'll be very competent to um diagnose what exactly the nigerian problem is or nigerian policing problem is to be honest, I think that there's a lot of similarities even with Ghana. Ghana yeah. I mean, there are quite a number of things that you would see in Ghana and then you see in Nigeria also. But with my experience, I think it is, it is with the impunity. So for instance, you've mentioned the case of, I mean, if you use the um, the, the, the road to From Nigeria. From border going into Nigeria. Yeah, proper, yeah. and Nigeria is like <laughs> second, second home. home so. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if, you, if you've used it, I mean, the, we've had experiences of meeting police officers or somebody dressed in some uniform of a sort which is or who is providing security at one place or the other take bribe from you change and give you your <laughs> yeah your, 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 your yeah, balance yeah. I mean, yeah. so that's the level of impunity that was I mean, the high here point. in ghana yes bribes uh, go on and on to have a police officer yes. change is it here in ghana for instance the notoriety of the police especially when it comes to bribe along the highways and all of that we know of the famous um style that they used to take yeah. their money so if you give them one kind of license to, book or something there's a way they will take it that you will have your eyes on them but you never see, see how that they are taking it yeah. so i think it is the impunity that is the the problem with the nigerian situation but if you look at it with respect to the SARS problem that's ongoing i think it's just a um a case of, of obviously a complex problem exists in nigeria and those who are tasked with the responsibility and duty as leaders of the state to address those problems have just created this makeshift security institution knowing very well that whatever goes wrong they're never going to be affected so i mean the president of nigeria knows very well that his son or any of his children and those within the most upper income on, yeah, in brackets it is it is, it is highly unlikely. unlikely yeah and recently i'm sure you've seen the um the daughter of one Tidula, yeah yeah i mean the, the backlash yeah for i saw three songs from the u.s say that i've been researching into this matter to understand what is going on yeah that's okay <laughs> and then you hear from another nigerian yeah who says that she has I've to also research. yeah researched into this matter before i can comment i mean it. her big sister said she understands that she can't relate to the situation so mm -hmm. it's not far-fetched that the little one will say well so, i needed to research before i fully understood the situation so that that, that tells you the problem here and that's what i think that the there's this makeshift security institution that has been created with the hopes that it would address a certain problem but the the negative consequences of it knowing very well that it's not going to come to the those at the elite end and all of that nobody cares that's what we are seeing what we are seeing today i'm happy because i've been to nigeria before 
I've seen the enormity of the problems, and even here in Ghana, and I've seen how sometimes you are likely to just leave everything to God because I mean the problem is so overwhelming that you don't know where to start from. Right. So the fact that we are seeing something now, some sort of um, activism, some movement, some angst, that in itself for me, I mean I don't even care what the outcomes will be. It's shown something, and, I, and I'm very grateful for that. Right, Miss Katarina, let me bring you on this point. You are a political scientist and also have some background in law. With the wave of protests that have been going on across the world, the Black Lives Matter movement and several other protests that we've seen, do you think this is one that has come up as a result of the number of protests that we've seen? And do you think this is one that will ultimately yield some results? I mean, in the US with the Black Lives Matter um, protest, there's still not um, the amount of change that is required to yeah. sort of like address the issues that came up with the movement. So, and like David rightly said, this is not the first time NSAS has come up and it has come about. So, a lot of people, especially Nigerians, get the sense that um, this is something that's, and that is why people don't join the protest in the first place. They feel this is something that has come up before to come up again. So, as with somebody with that background, what do you think informs the decision to go on protest even when they are likely not to yield any results? And do you think the NSAS movement is different from what we've seen, especially in light of Black Lives Matter? I think, again and again, as a community, we are obligated to speak up and to act. There is no certainty there will be success. There will be there's no certainty there will be change, because no matter how problematic the system is, there are a million and one people benefiting from it. Right. So you're pushing back against their interests, and they will push back too. Yeah. Until until the system is turned over, you need to show up again and again. If protests do not work today, they'll work tomorrow. Yeah. That is why the numbers are important. That is why it has to keep going on. There were protests in the 14th century, in the, the 15th century. Yeah. Very good. You know, protesting has always been the strongest voice of the masses. Voting is important, but again, you see, the options are getting limited and our political parties are becoming very linear in their approach to issues. Okay. So then protesting becomes a stronger way of unifying that strips us of our divisive you know characteristics so it's really important success is not guaranteed but let's do something also it's important to recognize that there is no god in this equation in the sense that god works through us we are instruments of god so if there are people on the street killing young women and young men stripping them of their dignity asking them to empty their account i've watched videos of I'm women of who are horrible. raped by horrible. sars like it's really embarrassing. A young lady should not walk into the streets and get raped. But they're very good at that supposed to protect. Them. Very good. Yeah, exactly. It's it's very dehumanizing. Young men are shot dead. We've seen the videos. Yeah. People are protesting Don't to have the color dignity. Of their hair. Yeah. Very good. I mean, the it's hair really si it's serious <laughs> yeah. profiling. Like we are becoming a community of terror. People are afraid and to the go out. As though Nigerians it. have now become used to the phenomenon. Very like, good. So now when you see somebody shot by SARS like you don't feel that shock again oh, yes. yes i mean if you look at some of the videos stuff um so today i saw a photo of someone who apparently i mean was in final year at the university or something and he had been killed and just let uh, i mean drop somewhere in some well and i mean for it's yeah, taking yeah, some time it, yeah. you see the body that has the decayed. way it has decayed, yeah. there's a woman who was shot in the face yeah you can see some part of the, of, yeah, yeah, Lagos, that's yeah. the i think there's there's a means of raising money for now there's a young guy also whose whose leg had been shot and there's some of the videos so some little altercation between somebody who is going to be arrested and then sas and there's a, an officer with a gun firing just indiscriminately yeah. so, so what is the public that? this yeah. is not a war zone yeah so ellie i want you to finish on that point about how so do you really do you say we should stick to protests because they work yeah. and i agree they with you work. we and have results we have the civil rights movement we have the actions of you know feminist movement and how you know 60 years ago women were not voting yeah a few years ago there was serious you know apartheid and segregation in south africa you can talk about even how our communities have evolved yeah. in the emancipation of human rights. So again and again, we need to show up. You need to act. Our generation must ensure that the next generation of young people will only read about this. No, no, this no, must be similar. very yeah. good. This must become a historic topic. Okay. Let us discuss it and say, what are the lessons? So wherever you are, if you can show up for the protest, show up. If you can talk on radio, on TV, let your voice be heard. On Facebook, on Twitter, you need to tension government. 
you need to keep them accountable these are one of the ways to keep governments accountable okay. and when there is pushback however you can support i know they've set up funding accounts isn't yeah. it yeah. Yeah. So in Ghana to, on, tu- on tuesday there's a protest yeah. at 9 a.m at the nigerian embassy so if you can attend yes. i think you should i think we all will show up it's mm-hmm. important that the community feels a sense of belonging it's very insulting for nigeria to be in turmoil and the rest of africa sits so don't it's I like that. Insult. so to just to move on from that point um i mean aaron you are a pan-africanist why should we care about what is happening in nigeria i mean nigeria is what yeah. six hours away by road 45 minutes by flight why should i care about what is happening in lagos when i have a ton of problems in my own backyard it's not see the state of policing in ghana is anything to write them about there are a few other issues that we are facing in this country as well we are going towards an election an mp was just killed there's a general state of insecurity why should Ghanaians show up at any NSAS protest or as africans why should we be genuinely concerned about what happens in nigeria Okay, thank you. Um, I think firstly we should. I mean, um, the elders have a saying that if you I like you, I like you. The elders have a saying. 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 The elders have a saying that if your if your brothers your neighbor's house is being burned, okay, yeah, that's also you know. Yeah, yeah, I know that one. Um, as not just as Pan Africans, first as Ghanaians, as Ghanaians especially, we should take this seriously because we've seen what happened in Liberia. When Nigeria erupts into turmoil, Ghana is going to be the country that will be most affected. True. Nigerians see Ghana as a second home already. Ghana used to see Nigeria. They see Nigerians, Nigerians as a second home. But if you look at the quantity and the population of Nigeria, having even one fifth of them in Ghana <laughs> and probably global our population. <laughs> more than triple because Lagos State alone is more yes. and is, so is if, larger if, than Ghana. If they are protests going, if they are protests going around all across the African continent, then we should be uh, in nigeria especially then we should be very very interested in what goes on because going into this election with all the untrust we get relating to foreigners having nigerians trooping into this country in their numbers is going to cause something we don't want to see we hope it doesn't come as pan-africanists we should understand that nigeria is the biggest economy in africa Mm -hmm. If Nigeria is to get, if Nigeria is to function, Africa will function. Yeah. It's there's no doubt about Nigeria has enough resources. Nigeria has enough people, has enough human capital to make the whole African continent tick. And so everything that goes on in Nigeria should be of concern to every other person in in Nigeria, in, in Africa. Nigeria alone can 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 rally us into a certain state of. Progression. So Nigeria alone um, can be a, you yes. know, the starting point for something for, for bigger, something big for a, a bigger conversation in terms of policing on the continent. They lead in a lot of things. Okay. And so what is going on in Nigeria, should be very, we should be very concerned about that. I mean, we shouldn't forget the fact that it goes on in Uganda often, Bobby Wine and yeah. Yeah. All, all those people see it. We, we shouldn't forget what's going on in um, Namibia, Namibia right yeah. now. We shouldn't forget that Sudan, Mali, South Sudan, not too long ago, Sudan, no longer ago, Mali, yeah. no longer ago, face these kind of issues. We shouldn't forget that, um, Places like Ethiopia have all these kind of have, have all these kinds of issues, and so we should be very we should be very concerned about what is going on here. We should lend our voice um, the, on the the protest happening on Tuesday. As many Ghanaians as possible, as many people from other countries living in Ghana as possible should join it because these are things we fight for for our diaspora and brothers and sisters. We can't import. I mean, we are a country of blind. We are a continent of blind imitators and bad copycats. We can't okay. copy this unwanted behavior to Great, thank you very much so as you can see on your screens we are showing you images of some of the protests that are going on in nigeria these are these are very interesting pictures to see we are happy that our nigerian brothers and sisters are showing up in their numbers to protest the injustice that is going on but david let me come back to you and i i want us to focus more in this um this segment of the discussion i mean we always say that um the government of a people is largely representative of who the people are so for instance a government is supposed to be a microcosm of who indeed the nigerian people are so if buhari is unconcerned uh, if osibanjo is unconcerned i like osibanjo a lot and a professor of law i mean <laughs> so if the apc and the people in power and i i even think this goes on both sides of the uh, uh, political divide apc pdp there are pdp governors that are also being very insensitive on the subject what do you think really should be the level of culpability of the government and do you think nigerians are citizens who put these people there or ultimately have some um, blame to be cast upon them yeah so um, i'll begin by saying um you know a certain phrase i am fond of saying to my friends especially that look 
Nigeria's one of the biggest strengths of Nigerians is our resilience, and that precisely is our problem. Okay. Nigerians are too resilient people. Oh, okay. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> no, so they like suffering. If you like, in my place in Nigeria, I'm a government to myself. In my community, we contribute for our own security. Wow. We paved our own road. The road that leads. And you still pay federal yes. taxes. Yes. And local taxes. In fact, as a <laughs> as a worker in the university, my taxes are deducted at source. So, so you don't I, even have they, a choice. They take it before I get it. So I can't even evade taxes from the government. <laughs> Literally can't. We have our own borehole. We drill our own water. If the roads are very bad, so you have you to drive a four wheel drive. You know, <laughs> because you can't pave all the roads in Nigeria. Yeah. So look. In many other countries, one or at least a couple of these things would cause pandemonium. Nigeria has, you know, a world of leading uh, record, right? The fact that we have 70% of our population living in extreme poverty. 70%. Wow. That's too much. Like, but you still have the Nigerian 1% the is the richest 1% on in metric. Africa. Yes. So, like, the, the, the class divide is very stark in Nigeria, right? We have the richest people on the continent and the poorest. we even have people poorer than those in war zones in Nigeria still. So to answer your question, why then you know, with this mass of poor people, right, do we still have this unresponsiveness in government? It's, it's simple really. The first is that resilience problem. Most people do not really consider the government as playing a part in their life. Mm -hmm. They live, you know, their lives however best they can manage right and then the second is for a lot of people their identities you know things like their religion and ethnicity are more important to them than even the the way they live like okay. the, the lack of any um you know sort of uh economic stability in their life right there are people who even without prompting would be on the streets in 2023 pushing the agenda for any one of, of these the people parties, that we're yeah. indicting right now Today. and it's because a lot of people think when my tribe wins i win right wow. there was such blind loyalty when an injured man was in power the entire south gave their votes to good luck jonathan okay. you would always have such blind loyalty when a northerner contest that's why the northwest and the northeast are always a sure lock for whoever is the most northern candidate okay. if that's buhari or if that's that's yaradwa as it was in the past they would have all those votes because for these individuals they feel that there is an identitarian contest like they don't see nigeria as a nation they believe it's a contestation between different nations okay. different tribal nations and it is their job many think right to make sure that their nation their identity wins whether it's religious or tribal, tribal. so in the end you would not find a nigerian except you know one who is really um fascistos who's lying really uh who would discount the fact that nigeria has problems every nigerian would agree Agreed. that there are problems and many would even go so far as to indict the current government but come 2023 nothing sadly, will change really. very little action will and be i like that historical perspective you provide but let me just digress a bit i mean i like ben Aboy a lot a lot of us seated here like him yeah. why was there a clarion call for ben Aboy to step in i mean he's he's not mandated to speak on the issues now he has come out to speak and has indicated how he has put in some financial resources into the protest but why did nigerians expect ben Aboy to come out and say anything i wow. mean in ghana we, we hold very little expectations of sarkodie so i don't <laughs> see i mean <laughs> if, 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 there's a, if there's a political issue <laughs> if there's a political issue and there's a protest and sarkodie doesn't talk about it nobody cares like kabute so what so please tell, tell me why you care about <laughs> ben <Aboy>. right in <laughs> saying branding please we respect kabute <laughs> but go on yeah but like branding is if one part of it but beyond that like let's take a step back a little and look at it this way look the thing is a lot of nigerians realize that your class your positionality and the optics of it shields you from a lot okay right even sas as problematic as they are they don't harass people like naramani who even who smoke who, weed in who their I, videos the stereotypical and, type yeah, of person who are the most stereotypical yeah. you know sorts of persons they should be chasing like okay. the moment you've achieved a certain amount of fame or um you know financial way without like you are free from such oppressive acts right so most nigerians then feel that it behoves on these individuals to say like, something who rose to those heights based on their supports based on you know their their financial and other contributions to then speak on behalf of us right but there is a greater burden even on burner boy because you know he, he has seems, acted like some felakuti yeah some he, modern day fella he, he in essence is claiming to be the heir to the throne of you know fella and okay. fella was you know Political. one of the most yeah, radical yeah, voices yeah, 
of his generation because we had yes lots of people fighting for democracy and blasting the military and all that but very few of them took the risk and bought the cost that fella did like he lost his mom he himself was killed mm -hmm. well they said you know he he was killed due to his health reasons but yeah. many nigerians do not don't believe that, that because don't buy it. i mean under the military people had letter bombs sent to them and they died like so you tell us that someone died of this <laughs> and it happened at a military yeah. gym no one is really going to take you seriously yeah. but the point is bona hasn't you know lived up to that aesthetic which he created for himself. right right thank you well, let me add yes so ellie just as, wrap up on this subject for me. as a self-imposed mm -hmm. ad Incoming Nigerian. No, 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 no. Incoming Nigerian. That's important to note. No, 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 no. Go ahead. As a self imposed spokesperson for Burner Boy, I think. Is it Burner Boy or is it Burner Boy? Burner Boy, Burner Boy. However you want to pronounce it. Yes, we are a nation that accepts your intricacies with pronunciation. But what I want to say is that Burner Boy has branded himself as a man that you know fights for not just the nigerian no. but the continent the pan-africanist mm -hmm. agenda and whatnot but i feel honestly and strongly that when we are going into protest we are going into a moment of should i call it a moment of battle we are fighting a cause we need to be patient with members of the communities okay i insist and strongly believe that when somebody has branded themselves have spoken like you should listen to his music he's indicting everybody that could have him killed yeah. if he's putting himself on the line there and again our focus should be on reminding them to show up and not indicting them for, for not, not showing up because okay. we honestly do not know what someone is doing you don't know the conversations he's having with the people that matter what they need is support and not reproach okay we need to have a united front we cannot be divided on the things that matter okay he needs to speak up Bernard boy when are you speaking up indicting him is a waste of energy it rather creates tension away from the conversation okay. we could well, be speaking about sars okay. so rather than we disagree on this <laughs> no, no, okay. I, I agree with saying we need a united front okay. like no doubt we shouldn't antagonize members of the community who could be assets mm -hmm. to the success of yeah. the movement however i think what this serves us is a lesson to everyone else right okay. like if you are coming up and you want to replicate bonus aesthetic and you want to be mama africa or you want if to don't fight that whatever, whatever you want to be <laughs> recognize that we would hold you a bad accountable yeah right we won't just allow you keep quiet when it matters i mean look at naira mali like very you little is expected of yeah. naira mali yet <laughs> Yes, he's actually one of you know the uh, celebrities who like have Mr. like Macaron. a very good rapprochement yeah. with I mean, the, the government. Have done very you know, well. He has spoken to the uh, police uh, <laughs> public relations officer. He has told them that look, they have about a week to do something, otherwise he would mobilize his fan base. Come on, um, you know we are waiting for that on Tuesday. Okay. Should the police not have acted by then? Which, imagine all the Malians being on the street. So Karim, we need to be wrapping up on okay. this. So, but I like the way the Nigerians, you know, the creative arts people yeah. in Nigeria have stepped up. Yeah. I mean, I'm a big fan of Mr. Macaron and i'm very impressed by yeah. what he has done yeah. on the other side Aye. there have also been some <laughs> very um, disturbing images from some comedians yeah. who have also tried to latch onto this and you know make, make light yeah. of the moment do you think we yeah. need to you know call out these people should we cancel them so for instance there's there's calls for us to cancel coca-cola and brands that have not necessarily spoken up on the matter like ellie said we shouldn't antagonize them but for brands that may never speak up on this matter the yeah. cancel culture that we especially we are seeing on twitter what do you think well I, I mean principle not uh in favor of cancel culture and censorship of any of any kind but but i do also believe that especially when you can create any connection between a brand be it an individual or a company that one way or the other benefits from any arrangement or even your own relationship with them if there exists anything like that i think that it is always right to also demand that they add their voice in the case of the coca Cola and the rest I mean, you can't force them if they don't want to. I saw a post from um, a former Nigerian who is now a um, US citizen, who is also uh, in the army or something like that. Yeah. And he commented on this. He says that he could not add the Ensas, Ensas yeah. um, hashtag because then it's not allowed being in the military. military yeah. But the point is that he's, he's, he says something. So for the companies, what consumers have over them is their, their patronage of their wares their services and what have you and i think that it's always very good to also weaponize those things because mind you it is a relationship between people and politicians basically people in power and the way our system works down here the challenge has always been that 
the politicians don't really care about you yeah. because I mean ultimately what does it come to? As the gym has analyzed to you the political situation and in Nigeria. Correct. I mean yeah, yeah. so th there's always going to be somebody to vote and somebody who is far removed from this and all of that. So it is good that those who have the platform on Twitter and the rest can storm. I like what K-pop, um, the, the Korean guys, that's the, what they yeah, call them, right? Yeah. How they are, they are, their fans are able to go about, I mean, they can hijack anything. Yeah. And I think that it is good that we do that so that here we get corporations, anybody with the power to be able to do anything at all, to realize that, well, Something we're not going to have it yeah, easy again. People are always going to come at you and demand from you to do something on their behalf. I think that is only fair because of the relationship Great. that we yeah, have. I want to conclude this discussion with you. Um, going forward, really, really going forward, what should be the position of the African in respect of how he treats or responds to his government? I think we are generally getting to a situation where people are becoming disgruntled by the those in the. Um, places of power and people are now beginning to take um, the position that we don't even need government in the first place in an instance like this where we are seeing a growing wave of protest and this is likely to lead to something else going forward how should the african be feeling about his government and what should be done i think we should look at it from the position of how the government should be feeling about their citizens governments have um, metamorphosized from into colonial bodies so their security structure is set up in the colonial system where the police seem to lord over the people, you know, Ogasi, Ogasi, mm -hmm. order from the top kind of securities. We should change that system and know that we are, it's a corporation, we are helping people. It's not where the colonial system, and even we it's in the apartheid system, will be oppress a group of people. That should be how we change, because we are getting to the point, we are going back to the days how we, of how we want our independence, yeah. where we, for the availability of a better way, we go boot for boot with the people who are interested <laughs> with, the people, with, the, with the security forces okay. and you get to the point where I feel that well there's another thing we are fighting for another form of liberation we are fighting for and so that's how we should relate about it we should just when you are restructuring it I, I think very few African countries have had a chance to restructure their security system so their colonial system 60 years on um, from after most people gain independence and that's what we should be looking at great right thank you all very much for this very insightful discussion I mean we've been looking at the issues of SARS uh, as they've come up in Nigeria, we are very um, disturbed by the incidents of um, members of the police really using force excessively and using extrajudicial tactics at the expense of Nigerian citizens. This is unacceptable. This is something that we must stand against. And that is what um, my friends and I today have been discussing. Really, we've looked at what the problem is and um, we've looked at how governments re really should be treating their citizens and in respect of reforming the policing system, not only in Nigeria, but across the African continent, because the problems are pervasive everywhere. It is loud in Nigeria today, but it may be another state tomorrow. This is the Hangouts Debate. I've been joined by David Ejim, Ibrahim Karim, Eli Katahena, and Aaron Nikomi, who have been discussing the first phase of today's um, debate in respect of the SAS issue. We'll be right back for the discussion on the African continental free trade area. This is a very interesting one. We're going to have David and Aaron return. We'd like to say thank you to um, Karim and Eli who'll be leaving us. Stay tuned and we'll be back shortly. Great.